What a great game last night on Thursday Night Football. We're going to cover it. Leonard Fournette and Marcus Mariota. But more importantly, we're talking about the matchups this week that are going to be awesome. They're going to help you win. We've got ballers on a budget. A lot of great things this episode. Check it out. Did you know that Spotify can be used in your car? Get all your favorite music now on the road with you and all your favorite podcasts as well. No need to switch between apps. Your Daily Drive is a brand new playlist, a mix of music and news made just for you. It's the best thing to happen in cars since the stereo. Take Spotify for a ride in your car today. Learn more at Spotify.com slash drive. And Foot Clan, don't forget, you can get an extra episode of this show. Maybe five's not enough. Maybe you need that bonus episode. Bonus. You can get it at jointhefoot.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. Hey. Welcome to the show. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you. It's Friday. We're excited to be here. We've got more Week 3 matchups. Jason is sporting his Lizard King apparel. Oh, yeah. Got the Lizard King shirt in the mail yesterday. It turned out very nice. It is slimming, Jason. It is black. Yes. With a red is, lizard. It's a necessity. If it wasn't black, I wouldn't wear it. Even if it was red, like inverse, like if it was a red shirt? That's correct. You would not wear it even though it's the Lizard King? That is correct. All right. Well, it's it's uh, Friday. We have Foot Clan Friday on the show today. We got some news, some in or out, injury report. We have ballers on a budget today. It's jam-packed. Did you guys watch the game last night? I did, and it was, it was better than expected in some ways. I get, <laughs> like Mostly just the first half. Well, you have uh, full-on Gardner Minshew yes. hype. Yes. Now, did you hear the one, the, the joke surfacing? Did you hear this one where when Gardner Minshew left for college, he told his dad, you're the man of the house now? <laughs> yes, please. That's oh, perfect. like Can we get a whole series of, of Gardner Chuck Norris jokes? That's, it, it's very similar. Yeah. Oh, that would be fabulous. Look, Gardner, I know his, his final stat line is basically 202, which is not – that's not spectacular for fantasy football. And it's we, still a secret garden, Mike. That's what I'm saying. I still see, see there's a secret there. It's it's tough to put that because when you put context of what actually happened in the game, Gardner was outstanding. Like he was he, he was a really really good quarterback. DD Westbrook dropped an easy touchdown. So if, if that's if DD just catches that one ball, Today is a very, very different day, and I know you can't just give him the stats. He got a he got a free touchdown though. They they the muff punt. They got the ball sure. at the seven yard line, and he had a little fade away to O'Shaughnessy. Sure, but so Gardner, it all evens out. Gardner is absolutely maximizing what he's being asked to do. Unfortunately, his team still has a bit of that curmudgeon. Let's run against a, nine guys in the box with well, you Leonard have, Fournette. You have to. Even if for well, you can, I'm not saying productive, abandon the run. You have to protect Minshew and let him manage the game by handing the ball over and over again. Sure, I, I'm, I'm not saying abandon the run. I'm just saying be more creative. Like look, sure. look what's going on with Leonard Fournette, and look at what's going on with Todd Gurley. I'm more talking about like last year. Todd Gurley is one of the best running backs in the league. He never runs against a stacked box because the offensive mind of Sean McVay figured out. Well, if I at least give the illusion that I might throw the ball. You can't put that many guys in the box. So that's the frustrating part for for Minshew and the Jaguars. It's Friday. Foot Clan Friday. We appreciate each and every Foot Clan supporter from jointhefoot.com our fantasy football community, but we appreciate the great Cambino, a oh. little bit more. Oh. Winner of a $55 oh. gift card. It's Foot Clan Friday. Uh, so you get 55 bucks to shopballers.com. Congratulations. You have won this week. 
couple of things, and you know, we'll circle back to that game and some of the news. Uh, I have a start of the week this week. I said it yesterday, Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack didn't practice again yesterday. I'm not advising. I, if he's active, I still have the same thoughts I had still yesterday. Play him. No running back in football has more carries through two weeks than Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack has been exceptional. They face an Atlanta defense that's beatable on the ground. So if Marlon Mack's active, I, it has my full start of the week endorsement. But if you want a second option, let's say he's out, because you could play Jordan Wilkins as like a flex play if, if Marlon Mack is out. But I want to bring Matt Burita would be my alternative start of the week this week against right. Pittsburgh at home. So efficient last week. Great running offense. So I wanted to throw that out there. I encourage our listeners, follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Now, Jason's with us this morning, too. Jason, can hey, you say hello? What's up, everybody? I wasn't sure if you were playing that game where you try not to talk for a while again. How, how are you feeling about Leonard Fournette after last night? Uh, I feel the same as I've felt for a long time, which is he's not a very good running back, but for fantasy football, it works. He's still, you know, was saved by a long yes, it was. 69 yard run, but he also had six receptions. And that's something where Tennessee is a good defense. We can't take away the fact that he was playing against a really good defense in poor weather conditions. It, it wasn't, you know, a game that you anticipated him having a great game and you can't take away the long breakaway run it, in the end. He is what he's always been a very inefficient runner who's effective for fantasy football. That's all I care about. Yeah. I would almost say he's, he's been what he's become, not what he's always been. He has five 100 yard games in his career. They all came in like his first eight starts or something of that nature. And then he just became this plotter. I mean, 10 points, 11 points, 12 points, depending on your scoring system, but volume. So you're yeah. right. I mean, you can't take the big run away. And ultimately, if you give a guy enough carries, then you're going to have some breakaway runs and some big plays. Would you agree that Leonard Fournette is the oldest 24-year-old <laughs> on the planet? Yeah. He, he moves like it. Yeah, yeah. He, he's really moved into the Frank Gore stage of his career early. Mike called him Leonard Flornet yesterday. Indeed. On the Sirius XM show. And you saw... The floor. I mean, he yeah. is a floor play. He's the Greg Oden of the NFL. The, uh. <laughs> the the fact that you can read off his stat line. Okay, well, how did how did he do? Well, he had 15 carries, 66 rushing yards. You're like, oh, okay, a, a tough defense. Well, hold on. He did have a run of 69 yards. <laughs> well, hold hold on. <laughs> but you said he had 66 total yards on 15 carries. Like that is. Oh, that, that's that would spectacularly be bad. 14 carries for negative three yards yes. outside of that run, but yeah. he saved it, and it would have been more entertaining to talk about that accomplishment today if he had not had that last you know run. But let's talk about some other players in this yes. game. I actually feel like it's pretty bad to disparage anything Jacksonville did they were great. creatively because it could not have been less creative and more embarrassing in my mind than what we saw from Marcus Mariota and the Tennessee offense. The, the play calling was atrocious. The creativity on that offense is the basement of football. Last week, when Deion Lewis and Derrick Henry, they each had like equal snap count. When Derrick Henry was in, he had like 15 carries. When Deion Lewis was in, he had like three. If Gee, you're a I defense. wonder what they're going to do. Yeah, it's like, okay, Deion's out there. We know he's going to either catch a pass or not run the ball. It's just ridiculous play calling. For, you know, second and 10, let's run. Second and eight, let's run. It's just run, run, run. And Marcus Mariota has died. He has turned into the equivalent of a can of Play-Doh that you just turn end over end and set there. And that's the value of Marcus sure. Mariota. He does nothing for your team. He just stands there. Well, to he be, takes no chances. To be fair to the Tennessee Titans, the, the, the run, run, run game plan, it's not working. <laughs> to be fair to them? <laughs> yes. They're one and two. Like I thought you wanted to be fair to Plato. <laughs> no. Because like I, I love Plato. Plato has it's great. value. It does. And I thought that was pretty rude what Andy said to uh, towards Plato. Yeah, we'll get a cease and desist from Plato. Plato's going to be like do not ever compare us to Marcus Mariota. I we're way better than that. And I'm sorry Tennessee fans, but you're going to have a quarterback change at some point this yeah. year if this is what we're going to see. But speaking of value, we're three, nine sacks. Sorry. Oh had to say it. Goodness. Nine sacks. We're 3 weeks in. And we are three 
very solid games now for DJ Chark. Where where are you at temperature wise? For I mean, he was four for seventy six. He's scored every single week. So I mean, which really helps put you at the top end of the fantasy players. But four for seventy six without a touchdown. That's a solid game for what you're looking at as a wide receiver three. Are you comfortable moving forward now with DJ Chark as a weekly flex player? I'm still. I'm getting closer. That that's where I'm at. I'm not. I'm not this on was board. A saying bad he is, matchup. This was a bad matchup, and he. But he also got the touch. You know, the, the three Andy straight, brought it up. Three straight weeks with a touchdown. A Andy brought it up earlier. You know, they they got gifted the ball on the goal line. That, but that had nothing to do with with oh, Chark. That was, that was O'Shaughnessy. O'Shaughnessy. Yeah, no, no. DJ Chark's oh, that's catch right. that was, was great. Was a perfect pass. He, a I, perfect pass in the rain. I don't know what my Gardner. hesitation is with him because he's six three. The, runs I'm, a four I'm three in. three. I no, think, I, I think I I'm can, in. I, I can tell in. you. No, I have. I have. I still have hesitation with him. Absolutely, because they threw for two hundred yards total, and you know Marquise Lee's getting back out there. Indeed, he looked better and. Now, Conley went down in this game, so we'll see what happens. Like, if you have to pick one to start, we said it yesterday. If you have to start one, you'd start DJ Chark right now. You'd chase the points and the size. And, like, he, he looks great. It's just a little bit more difficult to trust, you know, a 200-yard passing offense. And Gardner Minshew, this team has a defense that he needs to just manage the game, right? Sure. That's the solution to the problem. So, but, you know. I know Al Borland had DJ Chark on his bench and probably oh, feeling like, well, you the know, the process like this that one's totally process over results. I I don't blame people at all for benching Chark in you you haven't you hadn't seen it in three weeks. Like it's just two two great games for him, bad matchup, bad weather. I don't blame anyone for benching him, but I'm like next week against the Denver Broncos. I'm interested to and play Chark. The only other thing I think we need to point out: Derrick Henry was saved by a touchdown. The concern with him is that if they aren't – I mean, when they when they were down and they had to come back, he wasn't on the field. It was all Deion Lewis. The right. two-minute offense is not Derrick Henry. So he can and did get game scripted out. He just got saved by a touchdown. He still looked good to me, though. Oh, he did. He absolutely did. A lot Even better though, than Leonard Fournette looked. A lot better than Fournette, yes. All right, let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Most of the news here is injury related, in or out related. We'll tell you who we think is who we think's playing this weekend. There was another follow up to the Antonio Brown Yay! saga. Hooray! Uh, it's only relevant in as much as like there's been another request of the NFL to look at the situation to potentially stop Antonio Brown from harassing or intimidating parties involved in this discussion. So we don't have any news as to what the NFL's plan will be, if any, in terms of consequences for Antonio Brown. We're all riding the roller yeah. coaster that is A B right and now. I'll say the what's a little bit different about this news story is it is very explicit in the personal conduct policy uh pre preventing players saying you if you cannot harass. You cannot intimidate. So Antonio Brown has been accused of horrific things that and nothing has been proven yet. But now they're saying we have proof that Antonio Brown was harassing and intimidating people in a, a, a horrific fashion. So if they can prove that, then they'll have gra then technical it, grounds. The for NFL has the right to move him to the commissioner's list. Yep. What's it gonna be, McFly? Are you in? All right, let's cruise through these. Cam Newton, in or out? Out. out. All right, uh, running backs. Do you think Marlon Mack will play? Didn't practice Wednesday, Thursday. Today matters a lot. Pay attention to it. I do think he is in. You think he's going to play? I think he's going to play. Mike? I, I lean out, but you're right. If he practices today, then he's in. Josh Jacobs, limited on Thursday in practice. Been sick, lost 10 pounds. I heard this morning he, had, he needed four IV bags during the game last week. Goodness. So I, he was, he's dealing with a sickness, but I think he plays. I think he plays. I am nervous to play him, though. Damian Williams, LaShawn McCoy. This is big news. Damian Williams did not practice, limping considerably. I don't expect Damian Williams to play. He's an out for me. Shady, I think, will be in but limited. What do you guys think? Agreed. Same. All right, Devin Singletary, hamstring. Out. Jamal Williams, a new ankle injury yesterday, popped up uh, on the injury report. It was He was only limited, so I still expect him to play. But this this is good, good news. If you have Aaron Jones on your fantasy team and the – and Lafleur came out and was saying, "Well, 
I want to even up this, the the carry total, he may not have the option to even it up this week. I sent trade offers out for Jones. Aaron Jones this morning. Wide receivers, they were rejected. Wide receivers, <laughs> Keenan Allen. He'll play. Yep. T.Y. Hilton. He'll play. He's in. Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson. I do DJX not, is already out. And yeah, I, DJX has been ruled out. Yes, DJX out. Alshon, I think, is out as well. Tyrell Williams with a hip injury. He'll play. Corlin Sutton popped up with a rib injury, missed Thursday practice. Hmm. That's who cares? Don't play him. Yeah, that's rude. <laughs> I don't think it's a good matchup against Green Bay. So, sure. Yeah, he didn't do much last week. Albert Wilson, doubtful. Out. Rashard Higgins. Yeah. Hey, uh, who cares? Probably out. Who yep. cares? Tight ends. Jordan Reed. He is still in the concussion protocol. He's going to be out. Yeah. He may be out. 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 Well, out. that was the concern where. He he has so many like documented concussions like and how many concussions has he had that are undocumented and that you we just know stop. that we know that it compiles yes, just stop and yeah I mean the, the guy wants for your to own play. sake I mean Walk we, away. we love seeing him healthy on the field playing yeah. well there, th those things have never happened though in the last several years so uh, Dallas Goddard I don't Did, think he's gonna play no didn't practice Thursday uh, Jimmy Graham Trey Burton I think that Graham will play and Burton will play as well. Agreed. Jimmy Graham in running, you don't really need him to do that no. at this point. Just jump. Just, just go be, man. Just go be. Be, be free, Jimmy Graham. <laughs> just stand there. <laughs> that, that reminds me of a review we got on our Spitballers podcast where it said, okay, I, I love I love all three of you guys. I love Andy, dad splaining to the other two. I love Jason, you know, making jokes about food. And I love Mike. Just be in there. <laughs> just be just in be. there. Just be. Just Mike. be, Mike. It's, there has never been a better explanation of my role for these podcasts <laughs> is just being here. Just be. All right, wait, I'm, wait. The, I'm, I'm the Gardner Minshew of this podcast. Everything I'm is just, everything, I'm Mike. just here. Keep it beautiful. All right. Uh, Foot Clan game day alerts at jointhefoot.com on Sunday morning. Judge, do those come out about, what, an hour before game time, just after that? Yes, sir. And then Sunday live, one hour before kickoff. Make sure you... Uh, subscribe over at YouTube, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. We're going to do some water bet videos today. We'll put those up. The shows are up there. And then Mike is live on Sunday morning with everything you need right before the games start this Sunday. News and notes is always brought to you by the sleeper app. Make sure you check it out, download it, get all the latest fantasy football breaking news. Now we're going to get into the fantasy forecast. We've got a bunch of matchups to get through today. I'm very excited for week three. I want to see what some of these trends, whether, they, whether they're real, Mike. Whether yeah. it's some, you know, if, if Tinkerbell flies into your, your room one night, you could... Uh, it's a fluke. It, it didn't could happen. be a fluke. Yeah, yeah. It could be that's a, probably a dream. Yeah, two, two times, well, maybe, but three times, that's the DJ chart category. You start to believe. Well, it's not just the Tinkerbell rule, which we have just now <laughs> instated. I mean, it's, it's also the NBA GM rule that's of right. which I live my life. He's on fire. Yes. Yeah, heating up. All right, but before we get into the forecast, I do want to thank the sponsors that make this show go. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank Bombas. When is the last time? Legitimately, you guys have refreshed the old sock drawer. Ooh, need to do need to do it. Sometimes you end up in sock search land because you don't have enough or they're old and you can't find them. If you can't remember, it's time for an upgrade. Bombas socks are made with comfort innovations like arch support, a seamless toe, and a cushioned footbed. That's what I need for a my foot feet. Footbed? Super comfortable. Cushion. Absolutely. I love my Bombas socks. They're just comfortable, easy to wear socks. I don't want to think about my socks. No. I just want to know they're going to be comfortable when I put them on my feet. Yeah. So they have a new line of merino wool socks that are made from a soft, warm, and naturally moisture-wicking merino wool. wonder if that's Dan Marino. <laughs> Designed with all the Bombas Probably. classic comfort features. Buy your Bombas at bombas.com slash footballers today and get 20% off your first purchase. That's B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash footballers for 20 percent off bombas.com slash footballers we'd like to thank the studio sponsor of this show pristine auction pristine auction the absolute best sports memorabilia website of all time all my sports memorabilia is is purchased is one in their auction system and mike we we've brought this up before you, you'll be surprised you can get authentic 
verified, JSA certified, sports memorabilia, jerseys, cheaper at pristineauction.com than often you can buy a jersey in the store. Absolutely, and you know that those signatures are real. Right now, our man is Stefan Diggs is up on the wall, apparently because Brooks still believes. Brooks believes that a bounce back is coming yeah, he's for awesome. Stephon Diggs. My my home office is is just fully outfitted in Arizona Cardinal jerseys. All of them I've gotten from Pristine Auction. I never worry about a signature when I'm looking on Pristine. Check them out, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. When you sign up, make sure you use the code BALLERS. You're going to get five bucks towards your first victory and first awesome memorabilia piece. Fantasy Forecast. Yesterday on the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, we covered the Broncos Packers, the Falcons Colts, the Ravens Chiefs. Oh, I'm so excited for that. Yes. The Bengals Bills, Jets Patriots, Lions Eagles. We had a defensive coordinator yesterday say they believe, you know, Mahomes, Lamar. It's the next great Brady Manning rivalry. And I hope that's true. Wow. I hope we get that's that. That's very like I'm I'm in on Lamar Jackson. Right. But that's real fast to to put that type type of a title onto a player. Yeah, Mahomes is fine. He's the MVP. He's been yes. doing it. Lamar though, I think it's just an exciting thought process because we've talked about, you know, some of these players, Favre and Manning, they they leave the NFL and you want to see that next group that are going to meet in the playoffs over and over again. I think that's the comp really. It's like a couple of you know, AFC rivals that could meet in championship games I mean, for it years. It was supposed to be Winston and Mariota. And Brady's like, no, I'll just be, I'll be the Brady of this comp again for another generation. Right. It'll be, it'll be Mahomes and Brady. That's that's probably for the true. next ten years, <laughs> ten to twenty years. All right, Raiders, Vikings. This game's in Minnesota. Forty three and a half point over under. Vikings are heavy favorites. This line has jumped. Vikings minus nine. Maybe on the basis of. Josh Jacobs and potentially the injury there? Or just remembering that Carr is still the quarterback. Yeah, you, you know, we want to take it on the chin if we get something wrong. Last week we were very optimistic about yeah. Derek Carr, all of us, having a, a solid game against a bad Chiefs secondary. Derek Carr found a way to look real ugly yep. in that game. Red zone interception that, you know, on an end zone target to Tyrell that really hurt his fantasy numbers. So that was a swing and a miss, and – Derek Carr, thank you for that. In this game, the implied point total for the Vikings is 26. The Raiders is 17. What do you do with Carr and Cousins in this game? Are, are either of them streamable options this week? I think that Kirk Cousins is streamable. I prefer other options. I mean, like Josh Allen, once again, was, was by far the best streaming option. Hopefully, you're not in a scenario where it's Friday or Saturday and you're listening to this podcast and you have to find a guy. But I think that Kirk Cousins is at least playable. All right, we talked about Josh Jacobs. He posted on Instagram that he's been sick, lost 10 pounds. Look, if you're throwing up and you're you know, a professional athlete and you're losing fluids, that's not outlandish. But, Mike, you said you have some concern. Yes. He's the highest, he has the highest elusive rating for any starting running back right now. He's looked great. He's a, he is a great player, but he's sick. He has a groin injury. This is a tough matchup to start and then – we're we're still not sure with the sample size because maybe it was the groin problem for Jacobs. But when the Raiders fell behind, they pulled Jacobs off the field and they went to Richard, which is very troubling uh, for for his fantasy value moving forward. Yeah, so, I, I think I think that was a product of being way behind later in the game and him having four IV that's, bags that's on the sideline. We, we don't know for sure. Like, it, it was it completely that or was it this this will be the game plan i doubt i would pull him from my lineup i believe i believe that it was more they were way down it was it was a game that they knew they weren't going to win he was having four ivs on the, I, I'm, I'm on that side that being said he's still struggling with illness right now and, and a bad matchup so if something goes wrong and they're down just as much as vegas sees you know them losing by well more than a touchdown this same is the thing game could happen where the same thing could happen so i share mike's concerns here minnesota vikings great defense top 10 against the running back last season uh this That's is true. a this is a, a a matchup where you can start him obviously josh jacobs is a quality fantasy option. Can I give you an option then here? Like yes. a, some start sits? Because that's what's going to help people. He, we have him ranked right on the edge of RB2 zone. Like our consensus ranking on the week's 23. 
But right now, as it stands, would you play Matt Breida? Yes. Over Josh Jacobs? I've got. I mean, it's very, very close right now. I've got Matt Breida one spot ahead of Jacobs. What about Joe Mixon in Buffalo over Josh Jacobs? Ooh, that's a good one. I think that's really tight. Is a very, very similar comp. You've got a struggling player right now for different reasons against a bad matchup. I would lean Jacobs. Okay, James White or Josh Jacobs. In a full PPR, maybe White, but otherwise Jacobs. All right, Dalvin Cook, he's the RB3 uh, on the week for us. He's looked absolutely he looks dynamic and a key cog in the offense for the remainder of the year, assuming he can stay healthy. Tyrell Williams, Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs. You know, if, if Diggs doesn't perform well in this game, you know, we brought up this question on our serious show yesterday. Who's most under pressure to perform? And Stephon Diggs is one of the players in that category. Yep. So, will you panic if he doesn't? It, if he has three or fewer receptions, is it full panic for Stephon Diggs? Three? Yeah. I think that's a good line. Yeah, it depends on the yardage output. I mean, he has been – he's been getting deep targets, which, you know, last year we saw really, really shallow targets for – for Stephon Diggs, he was a, a PPR volume type of guy who could also put up touchdowns. So if he rolls away with three for seventy plus, then I'm not going to panic. But if it's if it's down to three receptions and it's back to old uh, checkdowns for Stephon Diggs, then I would panic. All right, uh, and then Tyrell, you'd put him out there. Yeah, this, not, not a great matchup, but I'll play him. Not a great matchup, and he's dealing with a hip pointer, so it's it's worrisome, but. In a PPR league, he's really the only – him and the Walrus are the only targets. You putting yep. Walrus in there? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> the Raiders have allowed the most plays over 20 yards, so we'll see if Stephon Diggs can get loose deep in this one. This is not going to be a very exciting game. Oakland's 30th in the league in pace of play. Minnesota's 25th. Both teams want to do the same type of thing. And eh, I'm not super excited about the output. Dolphins at 0-2 take on the Cowboys at 2-0. and The implied point total in this one has the Cowboys with 34.3 points, the Dolphins with 13. This was news that uh, we could have mentioned earlier, but Josh Rosen is starting. But, but, but we chose not to. But we not chose to. not to. I mean, what? Yeah. It's like a tree falling in a forest, Mike. If news right. cannot help. Or hurt you in any way, shape, or form. Is it really news? Is it really news? <laughs> Josh Rosen, you couldn't have fathomed a situation worse than what he had in Arizona last year. 3-13, and 13, no offensive line, uh, no offensive uh, weapons, uh, no uh, offensive coach. They said it couldn't be done. How do you feel if you're Josh, I, like if Josh, if you're Rosen, Josh Rosen? If he just started complaining openly, I'd be like, yeah, that's fair. You, you look and you ask the universe, what have I done to be put in this position? It sucks. So no, like no one, no one at no quarterbacks on the. You give me Peyton Manning, you give me Tom Brady. I don't care. You put them on this Miami Dolphins team, they are not going to be able to have success. I heard one of those discussions on Sirius yesterday with regard to like, okay, if Joe Montana is drafted by the Arizona Cardinals back in you know the eighties, you know the Cardinals were they're not good now. But they've had a good run, right? New stadium, but they were the laughing stock of the league for yes. twenty years. And you know, you, you put yourself in that bad situation, something different happens. It, Patrick Mahomes, one hundred percent. If Patrick Mahomes is drafted by a different team, is he the MVP of football? Probably not. No, you know, if, if his, Mahomes, like, if the Bears take, if he's drafted by Detroit, the yeah. Detroit Lions, is he the MVP of football last when year? When they want to run the ball, and yeah, right. no, it, and without maybe, an offensive mind like Andy Reid, no, it, it takes. Football is a team sport, and that team very much includes the head coach, not just the players. It's yeah, people get upset about the, the luck factor that is in fantasy football. That's undeniable. There is a luck factor for these players as well. Well, so you're not playing any Dolphin. You're not playing Kalen Balazs or Kalen Drake. I would maybe roster Preston Williams and hope he continues to be the number one target, or at least the number one. Did he catch zero of seven targets no, last that was, week? That was Devontae Parker. Parker. Oh, okay. I was going to say, maybe he's not the number one target, but he's the, the number one target that can catch a football on the team. But on the Cowboys' side, the Cowboys are Vegas' highest projected implied team total. They are saying they're going to score the most points this week, according to the line. I don't know who you don't start. 
I mean, I think you can even <laughs> put a flex play in of Randall Cobb or Devin Smith and just hope, okay, they get a touchdown too. The real interesting question here, because obviously you're playing Zeke, you're playing Dak, you're playing Cooper. What about Jason Witten? Nope. He's ha he's got 30, yeah. 27 yards receiving, 35 yards receiving. You know, I'd rather play Ebron. I'd rather play. So he's Jimmy like, you'd Grant. rather play Ebron than Witten. Yeah. He's uh, in the exact same, same category. Category. But a, li a little bit more, you know, athleticism and upside on that front. You know, Eric Ebron can make a bigger play than Jason Witten can. And it's just been touchdown dependency for both. So I, if you want to play him in that low category, but like this morning on the waiver wire, I need a tight end for next week. I've got George Kittle on by. The buys start next week. I looking at Witten and Ebron, and I signed Ebron. So well, but, and that makes sense in general. the The reason I was surprised is because of the matchup, the implied total. I mean, if if the you know if the Cowboys come out and do score thirty five points, I think that that just says Jason Witten has a good chance of getting one of those touchdowns. Sure. Yeah, and Blake Jarwin's making the more down field tight end plays for the team right now but I didn't want to linger on this game too much because you're starting your Cowboys you're sitting your Dolphins yep uh, last week the Patriots had more interception return yards than Miami had total yards so go Dallas defense Giants 0-2 take on the Buccaneers at 1-1 the Buccaneers are six and a half point home favorites in this one I do think Jameis Winston is a streamable option in this game I have Mike Evans and OJ Howard as starts of the week so I am in for pain, I guess, if things go wrong. <laughs> Just a glutton for punishment with the uh, Tampa Bay yes. Buccaneers. But they did win the game last week. He is learning a new offense with Bruce Arians. He was much better during that game, and I think he's a streamable option. Godwin, you're playing. What are you doing with the running backs in, in Tampa, Jason, Mike? Uh, it's unpredictable at this point because we've seen – you know, very different things week one and week two. But if you are forced to, though, I mean, Peyton Barber looks like he will be the guy moving forward. But it's it, it like if if this game comes out and now Ronald Jones gets twelve carries and Peyton Barber sees eight, that's not going to surprise me. So I I had traded Peyton Barber away in our league of record and had Ronald Jones on my bench. I just cut him right. because at that point, like if you're not. You don't know who's going to be. He got uh, picked up for $4 a fab. Ronald Jones? For the mystery. The mystery that is the backfield. I, I don't blame people for still stashing him. but Saquon, you're going to play him. Daniel yeah. Jones makes his debut this week. Oof. You got a bunch of debuts, right? You have a ton of them. Mason Rudolph and now Daniel Jones and trying to figure out which of these young quarterbacks has the chance to be productive. Teddy Bridgewater with his first start of the season as well. Can we call it a half start? Since they said they're going to use two quarterbacks, does he get a, sure, maybe, a half start? Maybe Taysom Hill with his first start of the <laughs> season. Evan Ingram did not have the week we hoped last week because it seemed like the ceiling was there with Sterling Shepard missing the game. You know, he's fine. He was fine. You're, you're playing him, though. Yep. Yes. 100%. So here's the deal with the receiving options, uh, not including Saquon on the Giants' side. Someone is going to be relevant here. But we don't know Daniel Jones' tendencies. We don't know where it's going to go. This could be a bad game for Evan Ingram if he's not targeting the tight end. But because of the tight end landscape, you absolutely have to start Evan Ingram. You you don't just have better options out there. So I take a wait-and-see approach on the wide receivers, and then you're basically just starting Saquon and Evan Ingram from the Giants. Panthers, Cardinals. This game's in Arizona. Kyler Murray. Cardinals are two-and-a-half-point home favorites. Kyle Allen, another young quarterback likely to get a start tomorrow. So He's coming home. Kyler Murray, through two weeks, leads the league with 899 air yards. He only has 17 rushing yards. They asked him about that disparity, you know, not running the ball yet. Yeah, Kyler, what's up with that? And I think fantasy owners want to know that, too. And he kind of, kind of just said, like, it just hasn't happened. Like, it's not intentional. You know, the defense has put a lot of pressure on him in the pocket. There hasn't been clearly designed runs for him, really. I think he started the game last week with, like, you know, a scramble for 10 yards, and then it just didn't happen. So I think that's part of his game that he wants to, uh, I, I would say, improve. You know, use the dual threat ability. We've seen quarterbacks. It just keeps the defense on, on edge. But thus far, he's throwing the ball a ton, which makes Larry Fitzgerald and Christian Kirk at home. Must starts. Must starts, yes. right? 
Yes, 100%. I mean, Larry Fitzgerald is my start of the week. Christian Kirk is just as good a start as Larry Fitzgerald. I think this is a, a should be a good offensive output for the Arizona Cardinals here. A lot of question marks with the Panthers. I mean, they could be improved with Kyle Allen just based on the version of Cam that we saw last week, which was very, very difficult. Uh, but it again, very similar to not knowing the tendencies of Daniel Jones. You, you're you taking, you know, if you want to throw DJ Moore out there or Curtis Samuel out there, I think you can. Arizona's I, do, I a, agree. Arizona is a very beatable defense, but is it's for a gambling man. This is those are things where you you're you're just you're getting lucky. I mean, if you put Curtis Samuel out there, you're saying he's a great route runner. He's got he's blazing been getting open. He's got blazing speed. I'm banking on the talent to win against a bad matchup, and that's fair. But if it ends up with DJ Moore gets 10 targets and Curtis Samuel too, okay. I, mean, I, I I'm trying to find another option than banking on an on the road Kyle Allen who will be under constant pressure from you know this defense this Chandler Jones you know Terrell Suggs I, I don't love having that depend it's the same reason that I'd be hesitant about James Washington in week one with Mason Rudolph could it happen yes how could, could they have a big game yes how excited is Kyler Murray going to be to try to beat Kyle Allen Ooh. these guys were established former, Kyle dominance these guys were former teammates back in college and Kyle Allen beat out Kyler Murray he's the reason that Kyler Murray ended up going, uh, changing schools, and now, now the the last laugh is going to be Kyler's. It's yeah. going to be exciting. Yeah, well, probably will, probably will be. Now, Mike, you have Greg Olson as your start of the week. Yes. In spite of Kyle Allen getting the start, the yes. matchup is overwhelming the rookie nature of Kyle Allen, who had a good week seventeen last year, right? Yeah, and it's not just uh, the the matchup is incredible, but Greg Olson has that we've had two solid weeks from him. I mean, there was really high volume from Cam last week as they were trying to, to come back. But still, Cam Newton completed under 50% of his passes. Greg Olson was still able to have a solid game. So, yes, I, I feel, I'm interested in Greg Olson this week. Yeah, and I don't blame you because the, the options at tight end, you just have to go with production. But I have some fears there with Greg Olson hmm. because of you know the rapport he has with Cam is unique, kind of the go-to safety valve. They have a mind meld, and Olson's had – been banged up this year already. So I have a little bit of concern, but Arizona's going to do their best to assuage that concern. Uh, these two teams rank first and second in the league in pace of play, by the way. Arizona nice. yes, Arizona do. on purpose. Carolina maybe less on purpose coming from behind. And, you know, the Panthers could slip to 0-3 here, and you're looking at this season going, you know, where, where are they headed, you know? Steelers 0-2 taking on the 2-0 49ers. The 49ers are six-and-a-half-point home favorites. 44-point over under... What are we expecting from Mason Rudolph in terms of being able to provide value to James Conner and Juju Smith-Schuster? Yeah, I mean, I, I think they're they're not going to hold him back. I believe they'll play with the same game plan they would have played with, with Big Ben. And it's just a matter of how good is Mason Rudolph. I think he looked pretty good last week. I actually liked him. I gave him a first-round grade coming out of college. I thought he was very good. And now he, you know, we he's got the... You know, you talk about the rapport, the mind meld that, that is between Greg Olson and Cam Newton. You've seen that for years with Mason Rudolph and James Washington from college to preseason games in the NFL. You know, I, I think you I think we could be surprised pleasantly by Mason Rudolph. Did you guys hear the press conference with Mike Tomlin talking about wide receiver snaps, James Washington? Not. No. He basically, his quote I think was something like, it's cool that like, Mason Rudolph and James Washington have that built in and that they've seen it a little bit. They asked him, are the snaps going to change at the wide receiver position? And he basically said, yeah. He said, yeah, they are. We're just figuring out what that distribution of labor will be. But he basically said everything a coach can say to say, you know, we're going we're gonna to see if we can take advantage of that rapport. So you talk about a sneaky deep league start. If you've got injury problems, maybe you're – we have a team. I don't remember which one it is. We have some team with DJX and Alshon Jeffrey on it. That's our Scotty Fishbowl team. And yeah, and that's, so that's a deeper league. You know, if you're in a league like that and you need to take a shot, I'm I think not, I'm not opposed to it. Like especially with Juju being more the focus of the defense and the secondary. James Washington is an incredible value play if you're playing some FanDuel this weekend. Like his his price opens things up a lot for what you're able to do. And if, for a redraft league, it's even if you got like a five bench, a six bench. I think James Washington 
is a great stash. I don't know if that I'm gonna I'm willing to put him into my lineup immediately, but similar to like like Terry McLaurin, week one or before week one, it was okay. There's now there's a huge opportunity in front of him. Washington now has a huge opportunity in front of him, so I think you should stash him and see what happens. It's really ironic because you're talking about McLaurin's got this huge opportunity, and Washington has this huge opportunity. I'm thinking you're talking about the Redskins, but you went you went <laughs> back to James. I did. As, hey, as McLaurin hey, plays for Washington. Keep up, man. Well, if you want to put all the pieces together, the Steelers' defense this year, 27th in fantasy points given up to the quarterback, 25th to the running back, 28th to the wide receiver. Minka Fitzpatrick can't fix all of that. He will help. And one of the things that you should pay attention to is they've been very vulnerable to slot receivers thus far, but Minka's going to help lock down that problem. So I wouldn't expect to see the same production against them over the course of the year. But all that being said, Mason Rudolph likely to be playing from behind if he's got a rapport with Washington. Even if Washington's a garbage time option for him, those points count the same. If you're the garbage man, whether you are, oh, we haven't played that oh, in a while. The garbage man can. <laughs> Maybe Mason Rudolph can be that. All right, start set on the San Francisco side. Jimmy G, are you willing to stream him? Yeah. Willing, willing to, yes. Yeah, okay. especially if you're in a two quarterback league, I think he's a good secondary option. Matt Breida, I've got him as a alternative start of the week. By the way, we have update, updated news. Marlon Mack is practicing today. Then he's going to yeah, play. Yeah, he's in. So optimistic that he's in there, but Matt Breida, a great start as well. I think Raheem Mostert is a great start as well. I I don't, you know, right now we've the got Colonel. the Colonel. We've got yes, the Colonel Mustard. Um. <laughs> We've got Breida at running uh, around running back twenty, Mostert around running back thirty. I don't know if the gap is really that big between those two, and Mostert just looked so, so good last Start week. Start them both. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they both. Matt Breida had one hundred twenty-one yards on ten carries. So both guys. The neat thing was Mostert had so much productivity in the passing game that I don't see a gap really either. So. Jason, would, would you like to make Raheem Mostert your alternative start of the he week? He is my alternative start of the week. Along with so yes, Brita. Nice. And, sure. Yeah. It, what Do you make anything of my name is Jeff Wilson? My name is Jeff. Getting the touchdowns last week, and then Kyle Shanahan was asked about it, and he didn't come out and say that Jeff Wilson is the goal line running back, but he kind of did. But he kind of said Mike, it. Mike, would you like to make Jeff Wilson your alternative start of the week? <laughs> not. I don't recommend I'm not, it. I'm not preferred. Yeah, I, d I think he's the guy that, you know. I'm just saying, does he, does he cap? Some of the upside of yeah. Moster and Breida. It could happen, yes. Well, you know Moster and Breida are going to go out there and say, hey, I'm going to score from 20 yards out. I don't need to mess with this Jeff Wilson. I, I mean, look, last week Jeff Wilson had two touchdowns and it it didn't affect most. I mean, it. you could say it did affect, but most certain Breida still had great Vance games. McDonald, George Kittle, you're playing them both? Yes. Yes, Vance is my start of the week this week. Marquise Goodwin, Debo Samuel, pick one. Debo. Debo. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, these are two teams going in different directions, you know? Oh, and Dante Pettis. The Texans and Chargers are the next uh, matchup to talk about. Let's get into that one. Oh, is that oh. that's your that was analysis my transition. on Dante Pettis? Yes, that was a pro transition right there. <laughs> that was an insulting transition. The Texans, Chargers, both one and one. Games in Los Angeles, Chargers, three and a half point home favorites. They've looked all right. Phillip Rivers in this matchup, I like it. Texans giving up 23.1 fantasy points per game. Deshaun Watson, you always play him. So, you know, if you're in a pickle, I, I don't mind streaming Phillip Rivers at home against the Texans defense that gives it up. Carlos Hyde, Mike, you have him as your start of the week. Yeah, I tried to go a little bit deeper, but I, I do believe that volume will be there once again for Carlos. What about Duke Johnson? Can people flex Duke Johnson in this matchup? I know my opponent this week is choosing to do so. I think your opponent is dumb. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> I will say this: the Chargers, if if they're beat, you know, it's it's by the running back position. So there is that. Yeah, they're giving I up just, twenty five point three fantasy points per game to the running back position. Jason, I, I just don't believe in Duke Johnson as a fantasy option. I've been saying it since he was traded there. He's a pass catching specialist playing for a team that does not really throw the ball to the running back. Just just a bad fit. That's how I see it. I mean, Carlos Hyde has come in and been the the lead guy. So yeah, I mean. Maybe, maybe you can. I mean, Duke Johnson is a talented player. I, I, I don't. I'm not throwing shade on Duke. I just don't like his fantasy outlook uh, for ever. I, I would. I would actually say you are throwing shade on Duke. Then. I'm throwing shade on Duke's fantasy production, sure. not on his talent as a running back or him as a person. Right. Or, yeah. 
Austin Eckler, must start. Hopkins, Allen, you got to start him. They're tied for the league lead in target share, 36%. When you have Keenan Allen running up the field for you, when you have DeAndre Hopkins, you throw them the football. That's what you do. And what's spectacular for Keenan Allen this year is he's getting used downfield. I that, that hasn't always been what he has excelled at. I mean, we saw him break out his rookie campaign where he was a, this deep field threat. Then they brought him in and he would turn into this PPR machine. His career has kind of been all over the place, but he's leading the league in air yards. He, he, when Melvin Gordon is off the field, Keenan Allen gets a huge bump up and we're, we're seeing that happen. Mike Williams. I was impressed with this performance last week when he was probably not going to play. Looked pretty good. Will Fuller, right now, that big play hasn't happened. Mike yeah. Williams or Will Fuller, which would you rather start? I'm on the Williams side. Ooh. I believe I'm on the Williams side as well. Uh, Will Fuller's had some air yards. It hasn't connected. Could certainly uh, make a play, but Mike Williams has looked yeah. great. I, I lean Mike Williams as well. Do you believe Austin Eckler will be, remain the number one running back in fantasy after three weeks? Overall, probably not number one, but – He's he is absolutely balling out. His I think he will. His opportunity is nice. is so incredible. Uh, it, it not just running the ball, but th through the air as well. It, it's with Jadavian Austin Clowney, Eckler is is winning. He's winning fantasy. Oh, I love it. I love it. I've got we we all have him in a lot of different spots, and he is you know Jadavian Clowney gone. Houston doesn't look like the same tough to run on team. I think Austin Eckler. You know, I would take the field over him being the number one guy, but uh, he's going to be great. Well, he's, he's, he's the number great. one through through two weeks, so All I was right. saying, is he going to yes. be the number one through three? Texans giving up a league worst 3.61 rushing yards before contact. Nice. You know, when you see in your head the, the plays of J Jadavian Clowney meeting you in the backfield, those days are clearly not happening right now for the Texans. So does that mean that Justin Jackson is a flex-worthy start? Here? I would play someone like, you know, I don't – if you I get him think, ahead of I don't steam, think, I don't know. If you you know you, you're talking the three point six one rush yards before contact, every play Just that I've seen Justin throw. Jackson get going, he, he he's tough. Yes, to but, but he's, if you only get six plays, he's that's not the problem. getting the opportunity. Sure. Saints one and one taking on the Seahawks at two and zero. Oh. Seahawks are four point home favorites. It's a forty four and a half point over under. Might be some light rain in this game. Seahawks. Uh, is that a blanket statement? <laughs> yeah, it's it's Seattle, so we all yeah. Yeah, just always. Just yeah. always. There, there's probably it's some built rain. in. The Saints have to figure things out with Teddy Bridgewater and Taysom Hill. We talked with Adam Lefko yesterday on our serious show, and he talked about the fact that somebody like Sean Payton, you know, prideful about his in a good way, you know, prideful about confident in his play calling abilities, you know, coming out in the first half with some scripted plays designed to take advantage of a very weak Seahawks secondary thus far this year, do you do you see a world where we can be hopeful for the Saints offense in a, you know, in a way you didn't see earlier this week? But do you mean comparable to a Drew Brees? Maybe Saints comparable offense? to the emotional reaction we all had knowing Brees was having surgery and going to be out a while. Yeah, is, I mean, there, is there a yes, it, it, it brighter? Could be, it could be better than we think. It's yeah. exactly what happened with the Colts. You lose Andrew Luck and you think the world is over. But Frank Reich is a great offensive of mind. He has made it, you know, maybe T.Y. Hilton is better so far this year with Andrew Luck, but he's been okay. He's been fine. Jacoby Brissett's been fine. Marlon Mack has been fine. And I think you're going to see some of that here because Sean Payton is another one of the best coaches, one of the best offensive minds. He's going to find a way to utilize Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas. So, yeah, I, I think the visceral reaction of losing Drew Brees was probably too much, and now credit needs to go to Sean Payton. Uh, you know, and, I, and I, I think he gets the job done for those guys. All right, on the other side of the football, we have the Seahawks. Chris Carson last week had one fumble credited to him. Debatable whether the second was his fault. Pete Carroll at least publicly said it wasn't. Pete Carroll also made the decision. I don't know if you saw the end of this game. They needed a big fourth and one. Now, post-second exchange fumble, they actually gave Rashad Penny some run in lieu of Carson, almost the punishment style. This next drive, take a take a 
Take a seat. Think about what you've done, Chris. Now, they got to a fourth and one situation to win the ball game. They're on the field. They're about to hand the ball to Rashad Penny. They call a timeout. They change personnel groupings. They bring Chris Carson back in. Carson picks up the first down. I believe that from an efficiency standpoint, we've seen such a disparity between the two. The way that the Pete Carroll talks about it, now, if he fumbles again, if he makes a mistake, now he owned it. But if he makes further mistakes, they're going to take the ball out of his hands. That's that's inevitable. But last year, through the whole season, he had three fumbles. So this is not a prototypical thing for Chris Carson. Right. How do you feel about Carson and Penny in this matchup at home? You know, where are you? Where are you with them? I'm playing Chris Carson as a running back one. The the volume just cannot be denied. He it, it can be denied when he gets kicked off the field, but when he's on the field. He he gets so much volume on the ground and through the air that I'm still I'm I'm moving past week two. I'm just writing it off and saying Carson will be fine. Yeah, I'm I'm expecting somewhat of what you saw from Leonard Fournette. A lot of volume, a lot of inefficiency, not based on Chris Carson, but based on the Saints. Their run D is elite, and I think it'll be a struggle, but he'll have enough volume to be a good play. Last week he did drop to fifty five percent of the snaps. Oh, that's not really an exciting fifty-five. No, when you go when you go down to fifty-five, it doesn't no. feel as good. No, you, you know, Rashad Penny had more work. I think a lot of people. Rashad Penny was drafted everywhere. He wasn't a free agent guy or a waiver wire guy. I mean, so there's a lot of hope in the Rashad Penny truth or community <laughs> sure. that we're going to see a changing of the guard. I don't think so. Tyler Lockett. This was what we were expecting. Hope the what. Andy's face. I'm laughing at you saying this is what we were expecting. Yeah, the volume. Yeah, 100. percent I was I was expecting Tyler Lockett's volume to go up. You were expecting 12 targets. I thought you were like more poo pooing on Tyler Lockett through the entire I was, off season. As I was, was I. As I was, was I. No, I was poo pooing on the the efficiency that he was hitting on last year, and I was like, so that's why I wasn't necessarily fully interested in at his draft cost, but I, I expected the volume to be more like this than week one where, interesting. He, where he saw two targets. Like I, I'm taking a personal L on Tyler Lockett for week two because week one, barely targeted, the one big play. Week two, 12 targets. Mm. I mean, if, if Tyler Lockett gets 12 targets a week, he's a top 12, top 15 wide receiver rest of the season, which is not where I had him projected. Yeah, I'm going to take the W. <laughs> so you know, uh, Tyler Lockett's a great wide receiver. He's the wide receiver one. It's nice to see him get those targets. Uh, this this matchup is a little scary. You know, it's a really good Saints defense, a little bit of rain. There was rain week one when he only had the two targets. So, and, you know, so I don't I don't necessarily think this is well, th um, a perfect matchup for him, but I don't see a world where you're not starting Tyler Lockett. Through two weeks, the Saints secondary has not been able to stop the wide receiver position. 41 fantasy points per week average is almost dead last in the league. There is opportunity for Tyler Lockett to take advantage of that, especially knowing he is a big play guy. It just takes one. Tight ends. Big Mountain. What are you doing with Will Disley, Mike? I know what I'm doing. I I'm dancing. I <laughs> Going down to the square dance. I'm streaming streaming him this week. You are? Yep. Yeah. I lost in Joku. And big Montana. Well, sure. I, I don't blame you. They're at home. Disley's looked all right. Couple touchdowns last week. If you look at his, you know, his uh, career, you, you, you know, he came out last year, shocked the world, was somehow accidentally awesome. We start getting excited, then is then he, then he's injured. Yeah, he misses everything. Shockingly, gets back for week one based on the injury, and then comes out in week two and has two touchdowns. Maybe he's just. Maybe he's just I, good. I I think accidental to us. I'm thinking he was trying to be awesome on purpose. Well, <laughs> I think he was out there really trying his best. Wait, well, what? <laughs> what am I doing? How did this ball get in my hands? I better run. Um, yeah, I'm so fast. My point is, you know, I I think if there wasn't the giant year long break, people would be super excited for Will Disley. So yeah, I mean, I, he should be rostered. Brooks has more guts than I do, or probably is, it's a reality. He lost in joke who didn't have any other options. In the, in that situation, I think you could stream him. I'm guessing you had the choice of Vernon Davis and Eric Ebron and uh, Jimmy Graham in that category, yeah, Brooks, he, right? He, he might have. He might have. 
All right, the Rams, Browns. Rams are two and zero. Oh, Browns one and one. This game's in Cleveland. The slate, the, the the schedule for Cleveland, it's tough. So when you you know all these expectations, you know Jason tempering the fantasy expectations. Now Beckham is a beast. He's the wide receiver four. We have him consensus wide receiver four on the week. Chubb, I expect great things. You're not sitting Chubb or Beckham. No. But starting Baker against the Rams in this game at home, uh, it's a, it's an iffy play. I don't know if it's a ceiling play. Jarvis Landry has not showed up. You can't really do anything there. And then we're going to get to see – we're going to see Ricky Seals-Jones maybe out there, oh Jason. Oh, my. What do you bro. think? <laughs> not excited, No, huh? I'm not excited at all. You're not keeping an eye on him. No, I mean, sure, I'll, I'll keep an eye on him. I, honestly, Demetrius Harris – Yeah is probably the better play over Ricky Seals Jones. Uh so I'm I'm not super excited about either of them yet. Um certainly not starting either one of them. Yeah, that's it. Uh, gross. Jared Garf, what are you doing with King Goffrey in this game? I think you can play him. Uh he is much better at home and unfortunately he's not there. But I still think that you can play him. He's a bench, big bench for me. Mm. Really? A big is old bench. Is this all just based on the home road split thing? Well, right now, no, it's not. Right now, the the Browns' defense is is you know looking okay. They both defenses are top seven in passing yards allowed, just two hundred yards a game. I don't think it's a real ceiling play with the pass rush coming from Cleveland. They looked a lot better on defense last week than they did in Week One. So you'd rather play you'd play Baker over Goff. I would play Baker over Goff. Okay. The I Browns, think I would do that at home, yeah. The Browns' defense, to me, has not looked good. You could say they're top seven, and I would say, well, they played Marcus Mariota and the you know the and Jets. Trevor Simeon tri- slash Luke Falk. Exactly. So, well, they, they don't get to choose who they play. Well, and- sure, but if we're, if we're saying, well, they are, they're only allowing 200 passing yards a game, I'd say, how did they give up 200 passing yards a game? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess we disagree on that one. Pass rush looked really good last week for Cleveland and and Jared Goff. You mix in a shaky road performance record right. with a strong pass rush in Cleveland. I'm not encouraged, especially with the inconsistency we've seen from him. So either I think he's going to make some mistakes, and I just don't have the same confidence you guys do in King Goffrey. I would sit him. You guys would play him. Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley's just been kind of fine for fantasy 15 and 20 opportunities in the two games you're probably just playing Todd Gurley if you have him yep Brandon Cooks Robert Woods Cooper Cup last week was a Brandon Cooks week now last year you had a lot of all of them weeks Mm -hmm. right last week was really a Cooks and Cup week you know Robert Woods Woods, had some yeah but once again Woods had his day and then it was taken away doesn't matter for fantasy owners. Doesn't feel no, good. No, it, it doesn't it matter for fantasy not owners. Not a lot of points for them. Totally agree, but I think the point Mike is bringing up is that what the what the Rams were doing and did on the field could have included all three of them easily. The penalties wiped those things away, but I don't think it's like you know, it it wasn't one of those situations where they weren't going his way. They were focused on the other two. He Goff was focused on all three. The penalties just wiped that away. Are you benching any of the three, or are you just starting nope. all three of those guys? Nope. I will play all three. Okay. Me as well. All right. And then, like... Brown's second most sacks in the league thus far, but I think I'll get the who they played argument again, so... Yeah. How many times was Mariota sacked against Jacksonville? A lot. What? Yeah. A lot. So. Jacksonville was back. Yeah, they were. Uh, he would, We have to at least mention the name. Gerald Everett for tight end streamers because Tyler Higby looks like he is not going to play. Everett has had some mild success when he has had to step in and be that guy. He had, I believe, four tar yeah, four targets last week. So you're not talking real real juiced up to play Everett. But he's in the streaming category for me this week. Uh so far through two games, in case you're curious. Brandon Cooks has 10 total targets. Robert Woods has 15 total targets. Cooper Cup has 19 total targets in the offense. Uh, Woods only had two last week. Cooper Cup had nine. So obviously you talked about some of the plays coming back, but that's a uh, Seems like big disparity in, week, disparity in week two. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
yeah, it, again, it goes back to the five that, that came back that don't go on the box score at all. But it seems like it's a pretty even distribution there. Uh, t- 19, 15, 10? I'm, 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 I'm just giving the five that didn't exist that were pulled back. I mean, I totally get that. I totally get that they didn't happen. They don't, they're irrelevant for fantasy. But what the play call was, what the quarterback did, and where he threw the ball yeah, moving forward. was even. Bears, 1-1, one one, taking on the Redskins at 0-2. Redskins, or the Bears are four-point favorites on the road in Washington. 41 point over under. This is our Monday night football matchup. Case Keenum has as many quarterback one weeks as 16 other teams in the NFL, a.k.a. <laughs> half the league, a.k.a. two. He's got two, two QB weeks. <laughs> Two, two QB one weeks. That was a really overcomplicated way to say that That's Case right. Keenum has been awesome for fantasy. That's right. But the Bears. Exactly. I mean, it's one of those things where I I want to start Case Keenum as a streamer. So it's it's just such a shame. You know, I love Terry McLaurin, what I've seen there, and it's like, oh, man, the Bears. I just – Right. It, it stinks that they have to play them this week. It stinks every week someone has to play the Bears. It just doesn't seem fair. Yeah, Bears are a great defense. They're giving up 14 fantasy points to the quarterback position, 14 to the running back position, 24 to the wide receiver position, which is ninth best in the league. So nine, nine, nine. Yeah, they they're they're showing up. I mean, t- tight ends have done a little against them this year, but that's because somebody has to, some position has to. So Terry McLaurin, Mike, I play him. Really? Yeah, I do. Wow, I don't. Jason. Uh, I mean, right now he is in one of my lineups, but like I said earlier, I'm not excited here. This is where... When I say play, I'm like, flex, this is a wide receiver three flex play. I'm, this isn't I'm cramming him. If I only play two wide receivers, I'm making him go in there, but... It's all a matter I'm, of what you have. I'm choosing to to believe what McLaurin has done the first two weeks, and it would, the Bears are great. They are not invincible. Emmanuel Sanders, and no, I'm not calling McLaurin Emmanuel Sanders, but... Manny Sanders just had himself a great game against this Chicago defense, so it's it's not an impossibility that McLaurin is just fine. Andy, if you had the option of playing McLaurin, Cortland Sutton, or Marquez Valdez-Scantling. I'll those... play McLaurin in that one. Okay, so I mean that's about the yeah, type of group that exactly. uh, you're There's dealing a group. with. David Montgomery in this game. Adrian Peterson, the running backs. Uh, give me Montgomery. Montgomery, well, I'm, it's not necessarily a choice. Just wanted your thoughts Shoot. on them. Week two, Montgomery, <laughs> snap count 45%, rushing attempts, uh, what was it, 18? Yeah, so the, the, if the snaps weren't what you're hoping for for Montgomery, but the opportunity was there. Like, he was the guy. Is that 18 of 25 snaps? Like in, 18 of 25 running back attempts. So he I was see. he was the primary gotcha. rusher for this team. I'm like I'm in. I'll play Montgomery this week. I saw enough from his from the workload to feel confident to plug him in. Do you bench Adrian Peterson in this yes. matchup? He's just not. He doesn't I, have what it takes to overcome. Not enough. You know, you need some passing work to overcome the bad matchup, right? Yeah, especially with the the combination of the offensive line and the defensive line here. Uh, you know, the offensive line of the Redskins has been trash, and then. How are they going to block the Bears' D-line to give AP room to run? Allen Robinson, Anthony Miller, through two weeks, Josh Norman has the third lowest cornerback grade from PFF. The Redskins have given up the most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers, 48 fantasy points a game. Now, even Mitch Trubisky can work with those numbers, can't he? For for Allen Robinson, sure. Robinson should see enough volume that he'll be fine. He'll right in that two threshold. Yeah, I, I I think Robinson will be fine. Yeah. I do. Injury updates, we talked about it. Marlon Mack appears to be working for the first time this week. It's a good sign. Devin Singletary has officially been ruled out. Frank Gore, he is infinite. He yeah. is all. So it, Fred Jackson's coming back. That's what I think. <laughs> to, to put a bow on that game, we said the Bears defense, they're shutting everything down except for the tight end position. Is Vernon? Where's Vernon Davis in your streaming category he's relevant he's vernon relevant. davis or jason witten vernon davis there you go yeah actually if i was brooks i'd probably I'm right on the line there with vernon davis and will disley i don't know that that's close i have wilson so that's i went for the wilson everybody's uh, just the stack. Stack. everybody's just hesitant to sign vernon davis 
off of waiver wires because they just expect yeah. Jordan Reed to be back, and we're just so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Graham did return to practice Friday. Congratulations, all you Jimmy Graham owners. Ballers on a Budget, presented by FanDuel. All right, Ballers on a Budget, we're going to help you with your FanDuel lineups this week. We're going to let Mike kick it off. Sure. Uh, Nelson Aguilar. Aguilar. Is it or or? R? It's Aguilar. Aguilar. I, no. I, I kind of said them both at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to. <laughs> it's Nelson A. Uh, look, Nelson look. Aguilar. Aguilar. <laughs> no, it's not that. It's not a Ag- That's Nielsen. more of a Larry Cable guy type of pronunciation. Nelson Aguilar. Uh, no, Nelson Aguilar. Nelson Aguilar. Did yeah. we get? It? Well, <laughs> I, I, I think we've really should have just kept going. Ah, so you should have could have would have. I, I can't believe the price on him. It's unbelievable. Be- because <laughs> <laughs> oh see, we agree. <laughs> uh, he, because his pricing uh, has not seen the reflection of. Deshaun Jackson being out and Alshon Jeffrey being out, like he's he's going to be widely owned, but for a good reason. Like he's he's going to see a bunch of target volume and he's crazy cheap. Well, and if if you're playing in you know you're you're playing in the Ballers uh, tournament here where, where you just you win any week and then you're in the are you talking the, the about the fantasy price. footballers leaderboard series with very limited entries at fanduel.com slash ballers i am if you're in there you know you're because it's a limited entry i don't think it's one of those things where you're necessarily worrying too much about oh this guy's own you want the best options when i was coming to make my pick i came to make nelson Aguilar. Uh, oh, no, 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 get no. It, We got to get it it's right. It's not going to be a thing. Uh, I, I came to make Nelson Aguilar my pick, and you already had him, Mike. I do like another wide receiver who I think is very undervalued at $5,900. Larry Fitzgerald, my start of the week. He balls out at home. This is a great matchup. Two teams with the highest pace of play in the NFL right now. Yeah. I think that this is going to be a – you know the Vegas over under. I'm taking the over on that matchup. So Larry Fitzgerald is is a real steal at fifty nine hundred dollars. Yeah, incredible price on Aguilar. Incredible price on Larry Fitzgerald. There's a world Larry Fitzgerald's a top fifteen wide receiver rest of the season. I don't disagree. The pace of play, air yards, his average target depth is completely changed from last year. And Kyler's slinging it around, man. It's there. It was so funny. You might a, want to go get him. Legitimately, a, go trade for him. In a press conference uh, with Larry Fitzgerald, someone was a, a reporter was asking him if he's like, you know, now getting open more. <laughs> and he he la- he got he's such a such a good man, so he didn't want to like give it to the reporter, but he laughed to himself a little bit and said, "I think I've been getting open for a while. I'm just getting the ball." <laughs> Which has got to be fun for him, especially yes. he's on the cusp of passing. Uh, Tony Gonzalez for the second place in total receptions in NFL history could do it this week with 10 catches. I'm going to stack with you. Kyler Murray, $7,200 on FanDuel. That puts him in the lower third of pricing at the quarterback position at home. They got to figure the red zone out, but if they do, everything else is there on paper for Kyler Murray. And you know, goodness, if he starts running a little bit more than what he's been doing, gets in the end zone. There's a lot of upside there. Kyler Murray's in the same price range of a Matthew Stafford, so I like Kyler with the upside at just $7,200. So a reminder, get in on the Fantasy Footballers Leaderboard Series, fanduel.com slash ballers. If you finish first through fifth, you get a DFS pass. You also get a chance to win an all-expenses-paid trip to Arizona, hang out with us, see a podcast. So get yourself primed and ready. That's our Ballers on a Budget segment. And if you want even more help, say you're still new to this whole DFS thing, or maybe you're a seasoned vet, but you want another perspective, check out the Fantasy Footballers DFS podcast hosted by Jake Seeley with Chris Meany and Joe Holka. Those dudes are crushing. Absolutely. It's a great, great listen if you play. And we'll be with you this weekend. Enjoy the games. Mike will be with you an hour before game time. Yes, I will see you then, Foot Clan. Sleep well. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.